Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. Welcome into our next Philadelphia Flyers video from Sports Fanatic News. Also, we'll go back to the name. They seem to be back well. The grittiest take. Um, this is Andrew, of course, my host, Andrew Santangelo, that's joining me today. How you doing, Andrew? I'm doing very well, Joe. Thank you. How about you? How about yourself? Doing well, doing well. Um, had the Phantoms game on earlier. That ended up being a nice overtime win that an 18-year-old almost scored a hat trick. He isn't even supposed to be in the AHL yet, but because of the OHL ain't playing, uh, he is, and he's killing everybody. So that's a great sign for the uh, Flyers uh, going forward. Uh, and then Kase is also killing everybody. So that's a great sign for the Flyers going forward as well, amongst other people that we won't get into because this is a Flyers, not Phantoms podcast. Um, but... This team obviously has been off for a while, but even so, um, James Van Riemsdyk is still, I believe, on Jamie's tweet. He said fourth in the league in points. <laughs> That's how good of a start he's gotten off to, as obviously he's my background, as I move over here so people can see, <laughs> um, that he's my background right now, and for good reason. He's also played his best defense this year, too. Best forechecking, best uh, back-checking, et cetera, et cetera. Seven goals, 11 assists, 18 points, a plus five um, to get him up to 254 and 245 career in both tallies at this point, and also brought up his plus-minus a bit because of the start of this year. Uh, what have you thought of uh, James Van Riemsdyk this for? Yeah, I think it's been a, a fantastic start for him. I mean, you ask... I mean, we talked about last year when he kind of struggled at times and we were looking for that extra piece to kind of get us, carry us to that next spot. And I remember us talking about him on here in various times, how he was like not consistent at times. And I think that's been a big difference this year. And it helps when you're under your second year. I mean, obviously he was here before, but back with the team, second year with the new coach, you kind of got a full off season now uh, underneath your belt with, with these guys. And it, it's clearly showing. And it, he's been, I think, the most impressive player on the team for me at least with what he's able to do, like you said, they're able to, uh, what he's done, like you said, he's fourth in the league right now, but you're just looking at the Flyers. He leads the team in points, goals, and assists. So it just goes to show right there how impressive he's he's uh, been. And I think he looks a lot quicker to me this year than he does last year. He does. That's why I feel like, uh, I know some people I talked to feel he probably had an injury that was nagging him last year that he had to come back from. That's the only thing that makes sense. Because normally at the age of 31, you don't just randomly get five yeah. times faster. So... <laughs> Like, that's, uh, that's why I feel like it had to be an injury and something in the past. But another guy, speaking of uh, veterans on the squad that's doing really good this year, is uh, Voracek's assisting them with the best of them. He has nine for 12 total points with three goals as the extra. He's still looking pretty solid in his own end, which he didn't before AV came in. AV made him a lot more solid defensively. Um, well, he looked all right, but AV's actually turned him into a good defender, I should put it that way, where now he's good on both ends and uh, really is a good contributing factor. He's definitely started this season off pretty hot and I think hotter than people anticipated. Um, would you say that he, this is a tough question, but would you mark him or Joel Fairby as the second best performer on the team this for? Uh, I'm going to lean towards uh, Voracek as the second best performer. I think... Uh... I, again, because what he's been able to do, what he's, I think his surprising factor helps too in that that sense. Because I think if, like you said, based off of last year, I think um, another guy that kind of, like you said, they they kind of focused on his defense a lot, and I feel like that kind of affected the way he carried into his offense last year in, in the first year under AV system. And I think he's benefited from that. I mean, I know all off season, how many times were we hearing, oh, I think it's time to trade Jay, uh, excuse me, Voracek and. People wanted him gone and stuff, and now he's out here probably one of the um, second or third best player on the team right now. And I think his ability, what he's done uh, overall game standpoint, has been a little better than Faraby, right? Like I, I think Faraby's obviously been a lot, uh, better scorer with the six goals on the season, but I think Voracek overall, complete game-wise, has been a little better just overall standpoint. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely say that makes sense. And then Faraby would be it would be JVR, um, Jake Faraby. I would say is the top three uh, forward performers. Uh, I should also um, be specific with because obviously Ivan Provorov, as always, looks amazing. So, <laughs> um, but Faraby, yeah, he's doing really good himself. But the one thing you said in there um, about JVR when when you uh, almost said JVR, that was true though too. Both of them had trade rumors in the offseason. Both of them are the two of the best players on the team. So it sure as hell was good you didn't trade them. Um, so it turns out 
life changes, things work out in the end. Good song it, too by Thomas Red. If you haven't checked, oh, it fantastic out. song. Um, I think real quick. I think you're kind of seeing. I said this before on one of my other podcasts as well, and I think what you're seeing from this team, and the important thing about, uh, I mean, with the Sixers, we used to run it back. So bringing these guys back and stuff, and running it back with the same group, I think. The way I compare it to is I kind of see this team being similar to the Phillies team back in 07 when you kind of got the taste of making that next step. You kind of got a surprising – I mean, don't get me wrong. Islanders were a good team, but, I mean, for us, it was still a surprising spot to, to be an exit. We thought we'd get past that series. So you kind of get a wake-up call, surprising spot to be kicked out of the playoffs in that sense. Now you go through the whole offseason, and you're back hungry, ready for more. So I kind of see that very similar. I think – I mean, I think right off the bat here in the early going of this season, I think you're seeing that. And I think you're seeing this whole group together. And, and you got to love the hot start by this team. And, uh, again, I think I think you kind of see that extra bond that they kind of created. Yeah, it definitely seems like a great uh, family feel with this team. They kept up, uh, which I thought was a great idea in the offseason. Moose is Hart's backup, which is working out mm-hmm. swimmingly right now. He's the best, one of the best statistical backups in the league this far. And uh, Charchidi actually wrote an article about it. I think he said he's an ace in the hole or something like that uh, in the Enquirer today. So um, that's, that was a pretty good piece, too. I would check it out for people that are able to read that, um, where he is. He's a guy that just keeps figuring it out. Ever since coming here, he's become a very productive backup. He didn't have the best sexy numbers last year, but he did step up when needed on the road when Carter Hart was not doing good on the road. And then Hart was able to figure that out. And that was just a fluke because obviously he was fine in his rookie season and he's done good in some road games this season after, but not the best yet. Hart's a guy that I would say is on the needs to improve list at this point. And he's even said that himself, but Elliot, um, has looked amazing, and I don't think he, other than one goal this year, has honestly let in a soft goal. So uh, what are your thoughts on the guy that everyone likes to go moose about? Yeah, first, I remember you were a big big fan of his last year, and the moment the season ended, I remember you saying you wanted to bring him back, and luckily they did. I mean, it's an important spot to have on this team. I mean, you look at other sports when, when other spots like that come up big, and you look at backup catcher, guys that don't play every day, but – it's an important spot where you have to fill that role because they play enough where they make an impact, and especially in, especially in a season like this where you're dealing with all this crazy stuff. We don't know what's going to happen, and obviously right now everyone knows with the whole COVID situation with the Flyers, you're going to have to deal with some of this stuff. And and not only that with the weird the weird pause now and then when you come back, but even without that, even if say that it's never happened, you're playing almost every day. You're playing the same team back to back, and sometimes it's a better look to get a, a new face out there. Uh, and be uh, in front of the net instead of um, running back with the same guy. Because w- with those two quick games and back-to-back in a series like that, guys are going to be able to make an adjustment. You're going to be able to beat goalies uh, easier than you have been in the past. And I think that's where a backup goalie this year might be bigger than ever just because of that change of pace for a goalie and a team. You can have that guy come in rather than playing Carter Hart every game. And then when you come to the playoffs – you're going to be better, uh, more beneficial because, one, you have a backup that you know you can play with, or, two, Carter Hart's going to get a lot of rest throughout the season and get him ready for the postseason. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that because we saw when the goalies went down in Edmonton, they were screwed. Koskinen had to play every game. He looked like he was half dead in some of the games that he was trying to stop pucks in. And then you had uh, the same goes for Vanacek. I think Vanacek's obviously a hell of a goaltender. You don't run the rookie of the month for no reason. Um, but... He caught up. You're not supposed to be a full-time starter. He was supposed to be, first of all, he wasn't even supposed to be the backup. He was supposed to be the AHL goalie or the taxi squad goalie. And then Hendrik Lundqvist, bless his soul, had that heart issue that he's doing better from now, and we wish him well. And then he became the backup. They talked him up, and everyone's like, well, everybody usually talks. Like, you thought he was good, but everybody always talks up their goaltender. Yeah. Turns out that worked out great, but it, it caught up to him. So I completely agree with that point because when you have guys overtax, it's going to catch up and caught a heart is obviously a young goalie that you don't want to overtax either. So, yeah, it's good to have a backup. It's also good to have a third stringer that seems to be able to step up against better competition. Like, Lyon's one of those guys that you probably shouldn't put in against a bad team because for some reason he just doesn't have the same anti. He's almost like a closer in baseball. Like, he doesn't have that (laughs) same, like, adrenaline rush where when playing the avalanche, he destroyed them. And then I can't remember, he shut out somebody up with Boston or somebody he played really good against. And those are two great teams. So it's like, he, that's why I think he has a, like almost adrenaline rush as the third stringer. So you can put him in inserting games. And then another guy that we have, McIntyre, um, 
has some rawness and isn't really an NHL guy, but if need be, can be up for a couple games because he's looked great for the Phantoms this far. So they definitely um, have picked them deep. And then they, of course, have Ustamenko, but he's injured. They have Sandstrom and others with ECHL. But, yeah, they have pretty good goalie depth, uh, the Flyers, and that's rare. That not rare to say anymore, but that was rare to say for most of my lifetime, I, I, I should say. Most of my lifetime, I would never say the Flyers have great goalie depth. <laughs> but... Recently, in the last couple years, it's been that way. You got Ursan in Sweden. He's playing for basically the Red Wings of Sweden. They absolutely suck. But he's uh, he's good. Um, Fedotov's actually playing for a good team and looks like a million bucks in Russia, which the KHL is the second best league in the world. So, yeah, they definitely have a lot of good goaltending and enough. And then Rowdy Ross is playing in college, if I'm not mistaken. So he either that or he's supposed to be playing in the juniors and just kind of sitting around right now. But he's a solid seventh round pick. So they have pretty good uh, goalie depth. So it's definitely uh, nice to have that. But I think as uh, two of our uh, wrap-up points we get onto here, we should probably shoot it over to the defensive side and talk about, one, the fact that Ivan Provorov keeps absolutely dominating. And I would say also the Sanheim and Myers line went together when both were actually healthy on the ice. Looks like a very good defensive line. We will start, though, with uh, Provorov and the fact that uh, it doesn't matter how many points Ivan Provorov scores. He just looks like a million bucks on the ice almost every single night. Um, and he's doing that again and stepping up again for a defense that was pissing me off, honestly, early on in the season. So um, what are your thoughts on uh, Provy? Yeah, first, uh, let me hit your points about the overall defense. And like you said, it was making you frustrated. Yeah, it was making me frustrated, too. And but the problem is you, you sit there and you're watching these games and it looks so good for the majority of the game. And you just have all these defensive uh, miscues at the end of games. I mean, how many times have we should have won games this year that uh, you end up uh, losing? And, yeah, some of them might be on heart, uh, giving up a goal here and there, but a lot of it is the defense as well, not helping them out. And I think that's been one of the most frustrating things, especially against the Bruins. I mean, a team you're now behind in the, in the standings, um, that that's the team that you kind of had all these miscues with, and that's why it's so frustrating is you really should have beaten the Bruins at least twice this season. And instead, you haven't. And I think that's a big major issue there in the defense. There's too many plays off there. But in, in terms of Provorov, I think he's been fantastic. I, I think he he looks – I mean, we saw how good he was last year. I think he's even went into the offseason, made his next step. I think he came back quicker and better than ever as well. I think – I think that's one beneficial thing we have with this group is a lot of these guys came up together with how young they are. And I think the chemistry shown with those guys as well. I think that's what you're seeing really uh, quick, really fast off the bat this season. I think Provorov is only going to continue to get better too, uh, which is the scary part for other teams. But uh, I mean, like you said, he's a defender, so it doesn't really matter how many points he's going to have in the end. But even that, he has that to his game that I think makes him even more exciting for us to watch. And I think he can add okay. that and add a little more balance from defense to offense. I think that's important for any team. And when you have a guy like him able to do that, it's going to go a long way. Yeah, no, Provorov, I mean, I don't think he's ever, since he's walked in the door, honestly, had a game where I went, why? Like, like there's, there's been most defensemen I've done that with once in their life. I don't think I've ever, honestly, had a game that I was frustrated with. Uh, Never with Shane Yvonne, Goss Barrett. With, with Yvonne Provorov, huh? Never Shane Goss Barrett. Sometimes, no, in the past, not this year. This year, he's been. This year, he's been very good. I will say he's been uh, fast on his uh, skates. He's been moving quick. He seems like he has his legs back under him. He definitely seems much better this year. That's why I don't know why the hell we need Eric Gustafsson, um, because he blows at defense. So, um, like you've got a guy that's worse than Ghost in the defensive zone. He's actually solid when he's healthy. Like in seventeen, he showed that he's a solid when he was with Provy. And then Gus has never done that. The only time he's ever had good defensive stats was his 60-point season in Chicago. You want to know why he had good defensive stats? Because plus-minus is swayed when you have 60 freaking points as a defenseman. So he didn't really have good defensive stats. He just had 60 points to sway the fact of people looking and going, oh, I had a really good plus-minus this year. Yeah, no kidding. He had 60 points. (laughs) So... Like, that's um, that's really what it is. Like, he has seven assists. He looks fine helping the power play. But I really need to see a lot more, and I mean a lot more, from him in the defensive zone. He's like, so he's basically what Ferk was when he first came into the league. Like, he's literally Ferk on Korkmaz. He can't play defense to save his life. And he's a defender. 
at least there's no actual defensive position in basketball. So it's not well, like Furkan was supposed to be a defender. Yeah, you're not supposed defense. to be either. He's a shooter. So like, where Gus is literally a shooter as a defender, where like that works, I guess, if you can fit it into your lineup well. But we don't have a lineup for Eric Gustafson. You need a guy that's more of a Niskanen type than a Gustafson. Like having Gustafson here doesn't help any. It was kind of like it's starting to work out now. He's doing all right. Barre in uh, Edmonton where they lost Oscar Cliffbomb. And I'm like, well, what the hell did you sign Tyson Barry for? Like he's good on the power play, but he can't play defense that efficiently. So like it's kind of the same thing. Those two signings didn't really make the most sense for the structure of the team you had. And that's how I thought with the Gus. And then also signing Braun for two years didn't make much sense either. You should have given him a one-year contract. But the at least you have the veteran in-house. I like Mark Friedman, too. I just think he played out of his head for some reason this year when last year he never did that. And he was a very um, simple as can be guy. Another good song. Um, but uh, I think uh, they're going to be fine on defense. But I think the key to why they're going to be fine on defense is you have to add one more. And I feel like they're going to add one more. And I honestly think that guy should be Mete from Montreal because I think he's a guy that has more than what he's shown in Montreal. They kind of just move him. Similarly to Russ Slovich in uh, Winnipeg, but not to as much of a degree. They didn't play him this year until his agent said, I put my client in, and then he played over 20 freaking minutes because he's a good defenseman. It's just they were trying to move him. So, And then they have Romanoff who came over. So I think he would be a good guy that actually has a bigger ceiling than he's showing now. It's just he's not playing the part of the lineup that he'd probably play here and have a bigger role. So I think that would be a guy that's not too expensive that if I'm the Flyers, I would definitely um, – go out and look for for sure but uh what are your uh overall closing thoughts on the team i'd say my final thoughts on the team are uh, again it's been a, a great start to the year outside playing the bruins that's been your kryptonite right now but i mean before the whole layoff thing right now you were looking pretty much at the top of the standings and i think uh it, it's still a, a major need obviously they just continue to finish these games obviously and play a full 60 because i think that's honestly been the biggest issue with this team is those miscues towards the end of the games and I mean we've seen them in the past so it's a weird thing to kind of keep having uh, go against this team uh, it's been an issue in, in the long run but I think uh, going forward I'm not worried about the team I'm more worried about how you're going to respond from this long layoff it's been a week today now since your last game uh, against the Capitals which was a fantastic come from behind high scoring hockey affair in that game and obviously you had momentum off that and that kind of got killed um, now you see what happens this upcoming week. I think we're expected to get back to practice from reading tweets and stuff and articles on Tuesday, I think is what I read. And then um, hopefully you're able to play Thursday, which obviously is going to always be a question uh, until you get that final go ahead from the from the league. So hopefully you're able to get back on the ice because, I mean, we've seen with the other teams. I mean, look at the Sixers, how it affected. I mean, look at Seth Curry. It clearly has affected the way he's played since returning. Yeah. We saw... We saw long layoffs. Uh, I mean, you look at college programs right now going through. I mean, uh, you pick a team, and it looks like they have a, a, a little – I mean, obviously slower. You're, you lose that game shape that you got back into. And, I mean, the only team I think I can see you say it really didn't affect was the Marlins, which is the oddest yeah. thing to say. But for everyone else, I think that's the biggest thing. And, again, I think this team will be fine. I think – the, the starts you're getting from Voracek and uh, JVR, like we mentioned, and, and Farabee is huge because once the other guys come in their own, it's not even like Drew's playing bad, but once he takes that next step that we're used to seeing as well, you have him to add on to that. And I think this team's going to go full force. And uh, I think uh, this team's going to be fine going forward and still expect the same as I did the, in the beginning of the year. It's a nice little playoff run. Yeah, I mean, you said it earlier. It has that feel of the 07 to 08 Phillies. Obviously, if that transpires, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, <laughs> so, uh, again, get the defenseman in order for that to transpire. But if they do that, I think they'll be in a good spot. We know Hart's going to rebound. He's not going to do what he's doing. And he's playing. He's not playing bad. He's playing like a – he's just playing like a slightly above average goaltender right now when we know he's elite. That's all. <laughs> that's all it is. Where – uh, he knows he's going to get back there, and after and they did motivate him because he started playing better a couple games after he slammed his stick, and that actually seemed to motivate the team. Where sometimes emotion, if you're able to take it and run with it the right way, is not a bad thing. If you're like David Ortiz and almost killed Dustin Pedroia with a baseball bat because you're hitting the phone, then that's not the right type of emotion. Um, so that's different there. But anyway, this has been 
our grittiest take flyers check-in report. We hope the guys are going to be back and well soon. And we are praying for the recoveries and hope everyone is well. For Andrew, I am Joe. Follow him at AJ underscore fan Santangelo. Me at JJ Boric 26. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody. And enjoy all the great hockey action. Peace out.